Hey everybody, welcome to the video. I'm going to give you a tour of my bookshelf slash bookshelves. This is the top of the bookshelf. It has never been this empty before, but I recently moved a whole bunch of books to a different bookshelf, which I'll also be showing you. And I'm gonna use this space to fill it up with uh, all the books that I've been ordering recently, because there's a lot of them and they need a place to go, so. So on the top here right now is mostly uh, what you might consider a classics or nonfiction or poetry or something like that. At the very top here, George Orwell's 1984. I had to read this book in high school and I don't remember a whole lot about it. I just remember not really liking it. I mean, it's very interesting and obviously it's good. I mean, it wouldn't be a classic if it wasn't good. But I just remember being a little bit uh, bored by it, and I haven't read it since high school, so maybe I should try reading it again at some point. The next book is called Berlin Alexander Platz by Alfred Doblin. Um, this is actually a German book that has been translated in English. It was written in the 1920s, and it is uh, a pretty massive read, not just from the pages, but uh, the story is very massive. The only reason I really had this book is because I took a class on the uh, film version of Berlin Alexander Plotz in college. That film was made in the 1980s by a filmmaker named Rainer Warner Fassbender, and the class was really about that director. It was really about how film can be perceived as art and how the director of the film can be perceived as an artist. Like all films have these huge productions with tons of people working on them, but how the director or the producer can become the main author or artist of a film. And that film is a 15 hour long film that was made in the 80s. And we read along in the book as we watched uh, one hour segments of the film each time we had a class. And it's it's definitely interesting. Um, I guess you could consider it a German classic. I'm not sure if I would recommend reading the book, but I would definitely recommend watching the film if you ever have 15 hours to spare. The next book is Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. The next book is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I read this book last year and I loved it. It was a little hard to follow sometimes at first, but after you get into it, it's so good. And if you haven't read it yet because you're worried about being able to get into it, don't worry. It is hard to get into it first, but once you are into it, it's it keeps you there. The next book is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is another book that I absolutely love. I read it last year and couldn't get enough of it. It's easily one of my favorite books. And next is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Most people have read this or seen a movie of it, at least. It's another one I had to read in high school. I don't remember liking it that much. I kind of got bored with it. But obviously it's good. It wouldn't be a classic if it wasn't good, so. The next book is When You Are Engulfed in Flames by David Sedaris. The original reason I got this book is because I love the cover a lot, and I've heard really good things about David Sedaris. He's a really great storyteller. A lot of the stuff in his books is nonfiction, like essays about things that have happened in his life, and it's all really interesting, really well told. The next book is called The Species of Spaces and Other Pieces by Georges Perec. I went to an art college, so we had to read this in one of my art classes. And it's, it's kind of weird. It's definitely really, really interesting and really good. I don't really know how to explain what it's about, but it, it has so many weird, interesting things going on with it. It's got so many weird things going on like that, and it's a really, really good, interesting read. And, I mean, if you're looking for something weird, then I totally recommend it. This is a book of poems by Ishmael Reed. This is the only other book of poetry I own. It's Love is a Dog from Hell by Charles Bukowski. This is a book I had to get for one of my uh, writing classes in college. It's a contemporary American short fiction edited by Joyce Carol Oates. The next book on the shelf is one I just read at the beginning of this year. It's S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorse. This is easily one of my favorite books that I've ever read, I think. I love J.J. Abrams, and I love the way this book was done. I'm actually going to be doing a full book review on this very, very soon. It's been a few weeks since I read it, but I remember it really, really well, and I really want to talk about it and show it off to people, because I really think more people should read this. It's really good. It just came out last year, and I really think more people should read it. All right, this is my second shelf, and it has a lot of heavy hardbacks on it, starting all the way over here is the Harry Potter series in all its glory. I'm not going to pull them out because I'm sure you already know what the covers look like. But uh, up here is Tales of Beetle the Bard. Up here I actually have another 
copy of the Sorcerer's Stone because the hardback is completely falling apart. This book right here is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. I've never actually read the real Pride and Prejudice before by Jane Austen, so this book was a little strange to read for me. But if you like Pride and Prejudice and you like zombies, then you should definitely read this because it's funny, it's weird, but it's funny. This next book I got a long time ago. It's The Sorcerer's Companion by uh, Alan Zola Kronzik and Elizabeth Kronzik. This book actually only covers the first four books, four or five books. It has this, just a ton of really interesting things in it, like things about creatures and different uh, things that are in the wizard world. It's like a little encyclopedia that talks about stuff. I don't know if they still sell this book anywhere because it doesn't include all of the books in it, but if you ever find it or find an updated version of it, I would definitely recommend getting it. It's a really fun read, even if it's not by J.K. Rowling herself. It's really interesting and really well done. J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy. I haven't read this yet. I've kind of been putting it off because of all the mixed things I've heard about it. I'm hoping to read it this year. I'm not completely sure. I'm gonna try. We'll see. This is actually like a deluxe version of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix that my mom bought for some reason at one point. And it's interesting, it's got uh, this hard cover casing on the inside instead of a regular cover is this really interesting painting by the lady who paints all of the Harry Potter covers. The next book is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This is like a Borders special edition version of it. It has Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass and a bunch of other stories in it. And the pages are like shiny gold. And I like the color scheme, gold and pink and black, it's nice. The next book here is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. I used to love this book a lot when I was younger. The movie of this is absolutely awful, but I do really remember loving this book a lot when I first got it when I was younger. Eldest is the sequel to Aragon. I actually have never read Eldest. I've never read it all the way through. I started reading it a long time ago, just never finished for some reason, not sure why, and just haven't gotten back into it since because I'd have to read Aragon all over again. And I also have Brisinger by Christopher Paolini. Once again, haven't even read it. It's like in perfectly new condition because I haven't even read it because I haven't read Eldest. If I wanted to read this, I'd have to read Aragon and then Eldest and then this again, and then I'd have to read the last book. Maybe I'll get to that this year. We'll see. This next book I've never read before either. The story behind having this book is me and my friend used to explore abandoned buildings a lot. I used to take pictures and it was a really fun time and one time we just found this book just hanging around one of the abandoned buildings and I took it. <laughs> I've never read it before, I have no idea what it's about. This next book is called The Highwayman by Ari Salvatore. This was one of my favorite books when I was in middle school. I honestly have no idea what it's about anymore, I don't remember at all. Probably might try to read it again at some point. The next book is called The Sea of Trolls by Nancy Farmer. I also remember really, really loving this book in middle school. Apparently this is a series and there's a whole bunch of other books out from this series now but I don't know if I'm ever gonna read them. This is kind of like middle grade, but I really remember really loving this, and maybe someday I'll check out the rest of the series, but I'll have to read this again, because I don't remember what it's about. And this, The White Dragon by Laura Resnick, this book has so much crazy shit going on throughout the entire thing. So much stuff that you, I can barely understand, or at least I remember barely understanding when I read it in middle school. I might try to read it again someday, because it's part of a series, I'm not completely sure. Maybe if anyone else has read this, you can tell me whether it's worth trying again. I don't know. All right, so this next shelf has a bit more books than the other two shelves, so I'll try to go through it a little bit quicker. All the way over here is probably my favorite book series ever, other than Harry Potter. I've barely seen anyone talk about it, and I really think it's a series that everyone should read. Literally, it is so good. It has so much going for it. I've actually thought about making a full video review on this series talking about why everyone should read it because it just has so much going for it. It has so many different things happening in every single book and I absolutely love it. The first book is called The Merchant of Death. The second book is called The Lost City of Far. The third book and probably my favorite book in the series is called The Never War. The fourth book is called The Reality Bug. The fifth book is called Blackwater. The sixth book is called The Rivers of Zara. 
The seventh book is called The Quillian Games. The eighth book is called The Pilgrims of Rain. The ninth book, and probably one of my other favorites in the series, is called Raven Rise. And the tenth and final book is called The Soldiers of Hala. This next book is I Am the Messenger by Marcus Suzak. I love this book. I talked about it in my top five favorites video, so go check that out. The next few books are John Green books. The first one on the list is The Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns, Looking for Alaska, and Will Grayson, Will Grayson, written with David Levithan. Every Day, written by David Levithan, which I mentioned in my top five favorites video. You should definitely check this book out and check out the video. And there's Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, written by Rachel Kahn and David Levithan. And I have Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith, which was surprisingly good when I read it. I loved this book a lot. I've never seen the movie. I don't really have any desire to see the movie, but the book is really good and really funny. Next is Running With Scissors by Augustus Burroughs. If you like books by John Green or like Perks of Being a Wallflower and stuff like that, this book is definitely one you should check out and read. These next few books are one big series called the Demonata by Darren Shan. This is the same guy who wrote the Cirque du Freak series, which I haven't read. This series is okay. Um, the first two books are really the reason why I started reading the series, because I absolutely love the covers of them, and they're actually really, really good. The first two books are Lord Loss and Demon Thief. Even if you don't want to read the whole series, I definitely recommend you read these two books because they're really good, even standalone. They're really good. Slaughter is the third book, and you can definitely check that one out too. It's also good. Not as good as the first two, but good. I don't think I actually have all of the rest of the books in the series, but these are the ones that I do have. I kind of lost interest after reaching the last book that I have in the series. It's good, but it kind of becomes thin after a while. The fourth one is Beck. Then Blood Beast. I really love this cover. I actually really love all the covers of these books. Demon Apocalypse, Death's Shadow, and Wolf Island. The next three is The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay. I like these books a lot. Movies are really good too. And then the next three is The Divergent Trilogy by Veronica Roth, which I just finished reading this weekend. And I'm going to do a full video review on this entire series sometime within the next few days. It was... it was okay. Um, I'll go into more detail of how I thought about the entire thing when I do that video. So look out for that. The next book is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I haven't actually read this entire book yet. I got this a long time ago. Never finished it. I've been meaning to read it again for a long time. I want to read it sometime very soon before I... I take the time to watch the movie. The next book is The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. This is one of those books that I had to read in high school and one of the only books I had to read in high school that I loved a lot. This book is so good and it has a lot of really interesting things to say. If you have not read this book yet, I definitely recommend you do it. It's won a lot of awards as you can see. The next book is one of my old favorites from when I was younger, like early middle school, The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. I love this book so much. It's actually a movie. I've never seen the movie and I kind of don't want to see the movie, but I read this book a while ago. I don't remember everything about it, but I remember loving it a lot when I was younger. The next books on here is part of the Artemis Fowl series by Ian Colfer. I've never read the entire series. I don't really remember a whole lot about the series. I used to really like it when I was in middle school. I haven't read it in a long time. If you haven't read it before, you should definitely give it a shot. This is another separate book by Ian Colfer that I remember liking a lot more than the Artemis Fowl series called The Supernaturalist. I don't remember what this is about either, but I, like I said, I really remember liking it a lot in middle school. So if you like the Artemis Fowl series and you've never read this before, you should totally check this out. The last book on the shelf is this one right here, A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. And Obviously, Shel Silverstein is amazing, and if you've never read anything by him before, then that's ridiculous, and you should change that and get this book or any other book by him, because he's great. This is the bottom of this bookshelf, the very bottom. I'll start over here. This is the Death Note series by Sugumi Oba and Takashi Obata. <laughs> Not really sure if I pronounced that correctly. 
but I love this series so much. I haven't read that much manga, but this series is easily one of my favorites ever. I love the anime. I love the story. If you haven't read this before, even if you don't like manga, read this. It's extremely well written, and the drawing is just amazing. There's a book over here that's actually a companion piece to Death Note. It is called Death Note, Another Note, The Los Angeles BB Murder Cases. The Los Angeles BB Murder Cases were mentioned very, very briefly in Death Note by L, and this book kind of covers that. It is not written by the same guys who wrote and drew Death Note. It is written by a Japanese guy called Nisi Osen. It is really, really well written. I love this book so much. It is a great companion novel to the Death Note series. It is told from the perspective of Mello, and you'll know who that is if you've read Death Note. If you haven't read Death Note, I don't know if you'd enjoy this, but if you had read Death Note, I would definitely, definitely recommend reading this. It is really good, and it's not very long at all. Down here, we actually have two Shonen Jumps that I got when I was in middle school. I don't really want to pull them out because they're big, and they have all of these books on top of them, where they've got a lot of interesting manga in them. The next few books are... A middle school favorite, Captain Underpants. I have four of them. Uh, Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman. Captain Underpants and the Invasion of the Incredibly Naughty Cafeteria Ladies from Outer Space and the Subsequent Assault of the Equally Evil Lunchroom Zombie Nerds. <laughs> Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Booger Boy, Part 2, The Revenge of the Ridiculous Robo Boogers. <laughs> and the first one, this is <laughs> Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Booger Boy, Part 1, The Night of the Nasty Nostril Nuggets. They're all by uh, Dave Pilkley. And I don't know if a lot of other people have read Captain Underpants, but I remember loving this book a lot when I was in like elementary school and middle school. Not completely sure if I would enjoy them as much now, but <laughs> probably. These next two books are part of a manga series called Hikaru no Go. It was illustrated by the same guy who illustrated Death Note, and that's one of the reasons why I picked it out. I never really got into it that much. It was good, but I never really went out and got the rest of the series and read it. This next one was given to me by a friend who loves manga, Dian Angel by uh, Yakiro Sigisaki, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Once again, I didn't really get that into this. I probably did like it. I read it a long time ago. I don't really remember. I probably did like it. But one of the turnoffs for manga for me is that you have to buy so many volumes to read the entire story. And buying that much kind of turns me off from doing it. I don't know, maybe if I ever get rich, I might read more manga because I can afford to buy all of them. And this next one was given to me by the same friend, Inuyasha, one of the Inuyasha books. Uh, Inuyasha Volume 2, Story and Art by Romiku Tagahashi. I used to watch this show all the time with that friend, and I used to really love like the ending credits theme song. The show was kind of crazy, it got kind of out of hand after a while, but I did really like this show when I was in middle school. So These next two books are a part of the His Dark Materials book series by Philip Pullman. Um, the Amber Spyglass, which is the third book, and The Subtle Knife, which is the second book. The Golden Compass, which is the first book, which just made into a movie. I actually haven't seen the movie, but I really love The Golden Compass. I read it so many times in middle school that I kind of destroyed my copy of it. It kind of fell apart and I had to throw it away, and I've never replaced the copy. The funny thing is that copy plus this, I've lost the dust jacket for this, and this, they were all different versions. I've never had the same version of the books ever, but I love the series. The series is so great. It's one of the greatest series, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't, or at least read The Golden Compass before you see the movie, if possible. The next book is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I love this book a lot. I haven't read it in a while but I decided I remembered enough about it to watch the movies without having to read it again. And I've liked the movies so far. 
they've got a lot of good stuff going for them. I just really love the Lord of the Rings universe in general. I've never actually read the Lord of the Rings books, but the Lord of the Rings movies are some of my favorite movies ever. I love them more than I could possibly explain, and I'll probably read the actual books sometime down the line. I might even try to do that this year. I'm not sure. This next book is called Crusader by Edward Bloor. I think I tried to read this in middle school, and I just never finished it, and I don't really know what it's about anymore. I don't really care about it that much. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever read this. Maybe you should tell me if I shouldn't give it a chance and read it at some point, but as it stands, I might just get rid of it. The next book is called Sword of the Rightful King. It is a book about King Arthur by Jane Yolen. Uh, I read this once again in middle school, and I honestly don't really remember that much about it. I think I might have liked it. I can't really remember. This next book is The Stowaway by Karen Hess. This was another one of my favorite books when I was younger. I'm sure you've noticed a pattern here that a lot of the books I have are books from when I was younger. There was like a phase in high school and college where I wouldn't buy as many books. I just reread a lot of the books that I liked already. And you'll see on my other shelf what I spent most of my time reading is on that shelf and we'll get into that when I get to that shelf. But yeah, this is really good. The next book is another book I had to read in school that I don't really care about and didn't really like that much, The Contender by Robert Lipsight. And then another book that I haven't read yet that I'm, I want to read is Anthem by Anne Rand. There's a whole bunch of other books that she's written that I feel like I should read, like Atlas Shrugged and Fountainhead, but I haven't ever gotten around to it. Maybe at some point I will. This next book, uh, let me give you a little backstory real quick before I even show you the cover. My friend, one of my friends is kind of a, kind of an asshole, and <laughs> but he's a funny asshole, and one of my birthdays, he asked me what I wanted, and I said, just get me a book, and he asked me what kind of books I like, and I said, horror, and he gave me this. It is uh, Pleasure of a Dark Prince by Cressley Cole, and he told me that the horror is in reading it, so that was his little joke of the year. He, to make up for it, he put money in it, which is obviously gone now, but <laughs> these next two books are part of a series called Redwall by Brian Jacques, and it's uh, Redwall and Lord Brocktree. I tried to read these books a while ago when I was younger. Didn't really get into them. They're supposed to be really, really good. They're supposed to be really popular. I haven't tried to read them again in a long time. I might try that because I've heard really good things about them. If you've ever read these books, definitely tell me what you thought about them, if I should pick them up again. Next book is The Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is really good. It's a really, really interesting fantasy book. I think it's part of a series. I'm not completely sure, but this is the only book I have of it, if it is a series. If you like fantasy, I definitely recommend checking out this book. I'm pretty sure it's like a classic fantasy book. Definitely check it out, it's really good. And this book down here is a uh, King Arthur like encyclopedia. It's called The Mammoth Book of King Arthur by Mike Ashley. I've never actually read this. And this, these books over here, these last books, are books that I kind of classify as not really caring about them all that much. And they're like dictionaries, like a French dictionary. And then I have like two regular dictionaries. And I have another book I had to read in high school called A Separate Piece, which I didn't like in the slightest. It was so boring, but it was another one of those classics. All I care about this book. This book is E.B. White's Charlotte's Web, Trumpet and the Swan, and Stuart Little. And this next book, I took a class on law in college, and it's constitutional law in a nutshell. Haven't actually read through this entire book. I don't really know why I still have it, but... Next book is another book I had to read in high school, Choosing Civility. My county made everybody in every high school in my county read this book one year, and it's really, really boring and just... Yeah. This next book is a book I bought in middle school, I believe, that I didn't really get into. It's a series called Keys to the Kingdom. This one is Mr. Monday by Garth Nix. Um, I don't really remember anything about it. I didn't really get into it. I didn't really want to start the series. This is probably a book I'll give away at some point to someone. The next book is another book that's part of a series that I just didn't get into at all. Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. 
Holy, holy crap. I just realized this is by Suzanne Collins. I didn't know she wrote anything else besides The Hunger Games. You know, I might actually have to read this book now. <laughs> I never realized that. Eh, I might have to read this now because I like The Hunger Games. And I've just had this sitting here. I never realized that Suzanne Collins wrote anything else. So maybe I'll check that out. Maybe you should check it out. If anybody has checked it out and has read it and has liked it, tell me if it's worth reading. This next book is another book in a series that I just didn't get into. Midnight for Charlie Bone. I remember getting this because I had read all of the Harry Potter books that were out so far in like middle school and I wanted to have something else to fill the void while I waited for the next ones to come out and this just didn't didn't cut it. It wasn't good at the time. I probably won't even try to read it again. It's like middle grade stuff. It's just not for me. I'll probably get rid of it at some point. This next book is called The Divide, and it's probably one of the most interesting covers ever. It opens like this, which is really cool. It's by Elizabeth K. and I don't really remember much about it. I don't really remember liking it that much, but I do kind of just want to keep it just because the cover is so cool. The next book in here is a TI-83 manual. And then this is called The Timeless Land by Eleanor Dark. I got this from one of my great grandparents and I just have never read through it. It is so boring, so boring. I don't know, not my thing. And this next thing that was, that was standing up like this but kind of fell over is The Rooster. It is a kind of zine people at my college put out that has short stories and photographs and art and stuff in it. I don't actually have anything in these, although I kept meaning to submit some writing work to them, but I always forgot and never did it before the deadline, so I never got anything in them. This is just a nice little shelf for some filmmaking books that I have. These two books right here are On Directing Film by David Mamet and Making Movies by Sidney Lumet. And these are both really, really, really good books on the art of making movies and the best ways to go about making movies from really unique perspectives. They're both really good. If you're at all into filmmaking, I really, really highly suggest reading these. They're really, really nice and really helpful. I took a class on film history and we had to get a bunch of these little tiny books on individual movies and we read these while we were learning about the movies. This is Night of the Hunter, Citizen Kane, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, Bombay, and The Wizard of Oz. We learned about a lot of other movies besides those but those are ones that we got little books on to read more about specifically. This is from the same class where we watched Berlin Alexander Plots and read that book and this is a book on the director Rainer Warner Fassbender. It's called Television Tabloids and Tears. It's by Jane Shattuck. If you ever get into Fassbender films you should definitely check this out. It's definitely an interesting read. These next two books are actually two versions of the same exact book. <laughs> this one I got originally and then I saw this one and it's a newer version it's got a little bit more stuff in it they're both books on cinematography and they're really really helpful if you're really into cinematography at all or any type of filmmaking just those are definitely books that i would recommend getting oh, here's my kindle this is a book on deloise's theories on cinema it's extremely confusing it's from a cinema theory class that i took in college it has a lot of really complex really weird ideas in it that i don't even want to begin to try to explain but if you're at all interested in film theory that's definitely something you should check out. Deloise on Cinema by Ronald Bogue. Uh, Deloise was a philosopher and this is kind of like a collection of what Deloise said about cinema. This book is a giant book about filmmaking, The Filmmaker's Handbook by Stephen Asher and Edward Pincus. This is like the quintessential filmmaker's book that every filmmaker should at least look through. It has so much stuff, it covers so many topics, and it's just completely helpful 
in every aspect of filmmaking. This next book is really helpful if you're into editing. It's called Conversations, Walter Murch and the Art of Editing Film by Michael on dot j this book is based around walter merck who is the editor for a movie called the conversations which is a really good movie if you haven't seen it you should definitely see that movie and he's done a lot of other editing work for a lot of other movies and it's basically them sitting down and discussing having conversations about editing and the best ways to go about editing and it's really really interesting and if you're into video editing at all this is definitely something you should look at this next book is actually a photography book it's called photography in print by vicky goldberg um, it's basically a whole bunch of essays about different photographers and photographs. This was something I read in my history of photography class. It's uh, I never read the entire thing. It's uh, it's kind of boring sometimes, but if you're into photography, it might be something interesting to look at. All right, so here is my final shelf. Um, I've mentioned before that my favorite writer, Stephen King, well, this is my Stephen King shelf. I have 34 books by Stephen King. Um, I've read almost all of them, and I'll try to go through them quickly while still saying a little bit about them. At the top here, we have The Shining, which everyone knows about, obviously. It was Stephen King's third book after Carrie and Salem's Lot. It's extremely good. Most people have seen the movie, at least and it's easily one of my favorite Stephen King books because it's just a classic. It's amazing. If you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend reading it, especially because he just came out with the sequel, Dr. Sleep, which I'm actually reading right now. The next book here is Salem's Lot, which is another one of my favorites. It was his second book, and it's intense. It has a lot of really intense moments, a lot of really good classic Stephen King moments, and definitely read it it's great next is misery which a lot of people have seen the movie and the movie is great but the book is even better they're very similar it's uh they're not that different actually there's not a whole lot in the book that isn't in the movie so the next book is the dark half which i actually just read this year it's inspired by stephen king's own uh personal experiences with writing under a pseudonym and having the pseudonym exposed to the world. And it was really good and I really liked it a lot. The next book is Different Seasons. This is a book of four novellas. The Shawshank Redemption is actually in this book and that is a really good story and so is every other story in this book. So you should totally check that out. This is Night Shift. This is a collection, his first collection of short stories. This is the book with Children of the Corn in it. This is Four Past Midnight, another book of four novellas. This book has a secret window in it. And the next book is Nightmares and Dreamscapes. This is another book of short stories. My favorite book of his short stories, actually. This book is Lizzie's Story. And this is actually my favorite Stephen King book of all time. And that's really uh, unique, I think. Not a lot of people can say that this is their favorite book. I don't know if a lot of people actually like this book or not. This is not a horror book at all. I would say this is definitely more of a romance than a horror book, and it is easily the best thing that I've ever read from Stephen King, in my opinion, and it's just so beautiful. It might be hard to get into at first, but once you're into it, it is just absolutely breathtaking and really good, and it has so many interesting things to say. And when you take the book jacket off, the inside is just beautiful. I love this cover so much. I usually read it without the book jacket on it just because I love it so much. This next book is one that came out very recently. It is 112263. This book, if you have not read a Stephen King book before and you're looking to get into a Stephen King book and you don't really like horror that much, this book is for you. It is not a horror book. It is definitely more of a historical fiction, uh, not really science fiction at all, but it does have to do with time travel a little bit. There's not really any science fiction. It's mostly historical fiction with time travel, and it's really, really, really good. It's kind of big, but it is one of Stephen King's best book in a lot of years. It is so good, and I can't recommend it enough. This massive book is... Under the Dome, which has just been made into a TV show. I don't know if anybody's watched the TV show. I have not. Let me know if you have. I don't believe it's any good. I might be interested in watching it at some point, but 
I don't really watch that much TV, so this I also wouldn't consider to be a horror book. It is definitely just more of an experiment in like craziness because there are so many characters in this book. It's honestly hard to keep track of them sometimes because it's an entire town just trapped under this bubble and he basically includes the entire town into the story and it's got a lot of stuff going on all the time and I really liked it. The ending wasn't all that great for me but at the same time I just really loved it a lot. It was so good. I didn't take me that long to read even though it's like over a thousand pages. This book is kind of interesting. It's uh, Duma Key. It is one of his more recent books. It's about a guy who gets into a construction accident and then goes and lives in Florida and starts to paint and he like learns stuff about the house he's staying in and it's really interesting. It's it's pretty good. It's kind of weird but it's definitely definitely good. This is Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. They wrote it together. It is a sequel to The Talisman, and I just read this last year, and it's really good. This next book is called Firestarter. I honestly read this book quite a while ago. I don't really remember much about it, but it's Stephen King, so obviously it's good. This is a book that actually just came out this year and was really good. I talked about it on my top five of 2013 list. Definitely check this out. If you are not a horror fan, not really sure if you can get into Stephen King, definitely check this book out. It's really good. This is another one of my favorites, Bag of Bones. This is another collection of short stories called Just After Sunset. And this just came out in 2012. It's called Full Dark, No Stars. And it's a collection of novellas. This book is called The Tommy Knockers. This is another one of my favorites, Needful Things. And this is another book of short stories called Skeleton Crew. And over here we have The Dead Zone and one of my favorite books ever on writing. It is one of the best books you could ever read about writing. And if you are a writer, I highly recommend you read this book. It has so many good things to say about writing and it could be really helpful to you. This book is Dance Macabre and it is actually a book where Stephen King talks about horror movies. And it's really interesting. If you like horror movies, I definitely suggest you check this out. This is The Regulators. It was originally written under the name Richard Bachman. There's another Richard Bachman book that is a companion to this called Desperation, which I don't own. Then another Stephen King classic, The Stand. This is hugely massive. I actually have never read through all of this, even though I really know I need to. I might try to do that this year. This book right here is Cell, which is another recent book. It is a zombie book. It is a really interesting concept. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I didn't really like it as much as other Stephen King books, but if you like zombies, you would probably definitely like this. These five books right here are a part of the Dark Tower series. The Gunslinger, The Drawing of the Three, Wastelands, Wizard and Glass, and Wolves of the Kala. I have not finished the Dark Tower series, but I'm hoping to do that this year, actually. The rest of these books are not Stephen King books. This is actually Nosferatu by Joe Hill which just came out in 2013. I talked about it in my top five of 2013 video. Definitely check this out. Definitely check that video out. I talk about it a little bit and it's really good. And there's Horns, also by Joe Hill, which is my favorite Joe Hill book so far. And there's In the Night Room by Peter Straub. Peter Straub is who Stephen King wrote The Talisman and The Black House with. I need to read more of his stuff. He's very, very good. And I need to read more of his stuff this year sometime. And this last book is Damned by Chuck Palahniuk, which I talked about in my first video 